Good morning. Uh, welcome to day three of KVM Forum. Uh, this morning we're going to talk all about uh, fancy animals. Emu, Q the emu. Um, if you haven't heard of him, he has been our mascot for three years now. I just figured we should probably put up his image out there so that people actually recognize him. What happened during the last year? Um, it was actually a pretty, pretty exciting year for QMU. Um, we have released almost three versions, almost because the third version, 2.7, is just coming, basically coming out next week. We're in the final, final, final phase of the release cycle there. <clears throat> so within three years, you can have a lot, a lot of features. For example, um, the, probably the most anticipated one from general non-enterprise consumer people out there was 3D support. You can finally, um, thanks to uh, work that was presented earlier uh, last year and the year before, uh, run 3D guest, 3D accelerated um, user space applications in a guest with proper host 3D support on the ho uh, using host graphics uh, adapters. So you can now play your games basically on, on uh, QMU, which was the main advantage that you had for VirtualBox. So finally, we just need a proper management solution, and either way. Um, we have, as always, pretty much every year so far, uh, we have a new target. Uh, last year was Tricore, this year it's uh, Tal TalGX. Uh, if you haven't heard of it, it's uh, a core made by Talera uh, to where, where they try to put a lot of massively parallel cores into a chip um, to, I don't know, I don't think they actually found a use case for it yet, but we have support for emulation of it in QMU, and there is real silicon for it as well. Uh, eventually, after, I don't know, I think the first discussion started three years, five, five years even, long time ago, um, you can run QMU, you do dash kernel, you do dash inner daddy, you have a really huge inner daddy of like 100 megabyte, which was what I actually cared about five years ago, uh, and it does not take 10 seconds to boot, it's just there. Finally, isn't that awesome? Like, you, you don't waste time copying packets, or copying data from left to right. Um, in parallel to that, uh, we also finally support post copy live migration. If you haven't ever heard of it, um, there were presentations on that too. Um, basically, this is all the stuff that was presented last year, and uh, it, it finally landed in the tree um, during the last year. Uh, post copy live migration means you can, um, you can basically run two systems in parallel where you leave your RAM on one, you execute on the other, and the RAM just slowly migrates to the one where you execute on, which means you always converge. You don't have to wait for, life, like for your live virtual machine to not dirty all the pages to get converged to the new system that you want to migrate to. Obviously, if one of the systems goes down, your VM is dead. Uh, we have virtual IOMU support, finally. Um, this started, I don't know, also about five years ago um, with AMD patches. Now we actually have uh, Intel IOMU support in the guest. So if you want to protect your guest from malicious IO, IO uh, DMA operations that uh, come from virtual devices, then you can now basically trap them inside a guest. So the guest can be more safe about its own DMAs. Uh, <clears throat> after a GSOC project last year that basically kicked off the whole thing and then a couple of sleepless nights by Ben Herrenschmidt, I guess. Uh, we now have Mac OS 9 support. You want to run your vintage operating systems? QMU is, is exactly what you need. And uh, finally, uh, Linux user is not a second class citizen anymore. So it used to be uh, lingering around for a couple of years that we used to not have a lot of uh, uh, new code or work, like proper support, proper uh, more, more um, improvements to it. Uh, during the last year, a lot of work happened. Well, actually, during the last years, really. Um, but we're finally at a point where you can restart signals, where you can be relatively sure that you can uh, run multiple threads in parallel, so you can basically run your applications without um, being afraid that things break up all the time. So a lot of cool things happened during the last year. And uh, obviously, in parallel to just normal code development, we also have things that will come up um, so for in, in, during the next year, and the basis for that is just like we saw with the uh, Mac OS 9 support, also always the summer of code. If you haven't heard of Google Summer of Code, Google Summer of Code is, um, is basically Google giving away free money for people to develop open source software, uh, as long as you're a student at least. <clears throat> so doing Google Summer of Code, 
um, we had a couple of projects. Uh, Stefan presented, I think, last year um, on his VSOC uh, thing, which is similar to what VMware does, where uh, you can basically just create a socket to talk to the host. Um, however, it's very hard to figure out what really is going on on that socket. Uh, so that project uh, is uh, just basically creating a PCAP interface so you can capture what is happening on, on your line. Uh, in parallel to the uh, Intel IOMU, I told you that the first implementation we had was actually an AMD IOMU. That is finally getting upstream and getting polished. Uh, so we expect that one on my keynote or on somebody else's keynote uh, next year. And uh, imagine you have, so if you ever used VNC with a non-USB tablet, um, you probably saw that your cursors are distorted because you, uh, VNC only gets absolute positions and your guest from a real mouse, from a just normal, normal mouse uh, that you emulate, you only get relative position data, so you don't really know where you are on your screen, and so you basically get two mouse cursors. So the solution to that is usually to have an absolute input method, like a USB tablet. Um, however, if you're running something like Windows 3.1 that doesn't have USB support, then you might be stuck with the sorted mouse, mouse cursors. So now, with serial tablet support, uh, we can finally run Windows 3.1 in VNC with properly aligned mouse cursors. Isn't that awesome? Like 20 years later? <laughs> Alex, uh, in his usual fashion, kept going on uh, doing multi-threaded TCG. Um, so that was a project to uh, improve memory consistency on that. Uh, Dave uh, did uh, more post-copy life migration. Uh, patches with a student, uh, and uh, Fam and Stefan worked on uh, improving our QMU IMG command. I'm not mentioning the students because you will st see all the students signed off by and patches on the mailing lists, but the one thing you don't see is all the hard work the mentors actually put into mentoring those students to get working and usable patches out at the end of the day. Um, so thanks a lot to all the mentors uh, that put, like, I don't know how many weeks, months of work into getting students up to speed to finally, eventually, maybe, get us new contributors that then help us improve QMU. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> Just like last year, we also had uh, Outreachery. The Outreachery program is uh, a program to support minorities, and apparently it's not only there for supporting uh, female minorities, but in general minorities, because this year uh, the person is male. Um, but we do have uh, USB MTP emulation there, which Bandon is... Uh, is mentoring. I don't think we have to, either way. Thanks to him too. It's awesome. Um, so that's, that's the slide you probably were expecting the most. Um, how do we do? I mean, did we actually improve the code last year? Did, did we grow a lot? Did we not grow a lot? And the trend is very easy to see. Yes, it's business as usual. We grow at a steady linear rate. Our code base is going to hit uh, 1.8 million lines of code reasonably soon if we don't do anything against it. I'll come to that later. <clears throat> we also have, um, after a like, slight downturn of commit rate and of, uh, of lines of code added to the code base, we are back into a reasonable spike of where we should be on our, our uh, like growth rate. Uh, so we, we are actually growing more this year than we did the last couple, two years. And one thing that actually makes me the most happy is uh, we're seeing a steady increase of reviewed buys and act buys. So more and more people go in and review code, act code, make sure that things are sane before they hit the tree. So even though we get more commits, we actually also get a lot more reviews in a proportionally bigger growth rate than just the commits themselves. <clears throat> now, who was actually doing all their work? Um, you can see that we do have a lot of individuals that work on QMU. So basically the second biggest category that we have are individuals, just people that are not affiliated or don't want to be affiliated with companies and just go and figure QMU is a cool project to work on, let's just go and do it. This is exactly what you need in an open source environment because if you only have companies behind a project um, then you miss out on all the cool and fancy innovative parts because companies kind of tend to want to implement enterprise and whatever customers want to have features, whereas individuals can just go away and hack on whatever they like. 
Um, obviously, just like the last, I don't know, 10 years, Red Hat is number one um, by far. And then we have Linaro coming up as number three. Awesome. And IBM with SG90 and uh, PowerPC obviously gets, I mean, a pretty big slice. And then we have all the others slowly coming down. Uh, for commits, so commits are basically uh, counts maintainers. So commits means uh, people who commit things into the tree. So those are all your subsystem maintainers, all your people who um, are the first to pick up patches into a Git tree. And there again, Red Hat has a like, huge, 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 huge leap ahead. Uh, Linaro comes second, and we have less individuals maintaining code than people writing code, which is expected. So that looks basically the same as last year. For reviews, again, I mean, just the sheer number of Red Hat people on, in the community just means that they win by, by far. Linaro has done a really awesome job of reviewing code. And you see that a lot of individuals actually also end up reviewing code and not just writing code, which is cool because you, you actually get input from people who don't necessarily have business incentive to do things. They just like the project. They just want to be part of a really big family, which is what I would like to see. Now, you might remember that last year, uh, Paolo win, won basically all three individual ranks, right? This year, it's different. This year, Peter is the one. Peter, come on. Thank you, man. Thank you. I have no idea how a single individual can maintain the QMU code base, write the most commits, uh, commit the most commits to the tree, well, that works as a maintainer, uh, and also review most of the commits in parallel to it. I mean, just doing one of those three basically is a full-time job. One of the four is a full-time job. Now, what can we expect next year? We've seen uh, a lot of cool, innovative things that basically uh, do, during, during those uh, two days, and you will see more today. Uh, so you can probably expect most of them to hit the tree next year, but I selected a few things that I think are noteworthy for QMU um, that we might be able to see in a keynote as status for next year, for this year, next year. So the, the thing that I'm mostly thrilled about is multi-threaded TCG. So TCG has traditionally always been single-threaded. Single you basically initially were only able to run a single CPU, then somebody went ahead and enabled multi CPU support, so you could then run four CPUs on a single host CPU, which did not really give you performance boosts, since you're suddenly running all your stuff still on a single CPU, and you, just, and you still have to do the concurrency parts. Um, so that slowed things down, really. Uh, with multi-threaded TCG, you can now go and put multiple guest vCPUs onto multiple host, VCPU, or host physical CPUs. So if you have an eight-core system, you can run an eight-core guest and actually have eight cores used. Doing that in a fully platform agnostic fashion is very complicated. So um, this, is, this is really awesome work that's happening there. And it looks promising. I can't promise it, but it looks promising. Um, another thing that people do get excited about, let's see how well we do, is spring cleaning. We realized uh, during the QMU summit, which happened uh, two days ago, uh, that our code base is growing, as you've seen, um, at a different rate than people actually end up converting code, than people end up improving code. So you have a really good chance of, if you just pick a random file in the code base, you get a really bad example of how to not do things, basically. Um, since it just, you have lots of old code lying around that we still carry around that still works, it's just not done according to the like, latest techniques that we have to do things, like object models. So uh, one thing that we will start to tackle uh, during the next year is uh, we will start to deprecate code that has basically either not been touched for a long time or not been converted to our new models of doing things so that people then get some leeway um, of improving the code and then expect one or two years from now uh, from, or from the point in time when we start the deprecation warnings. Uh, that graph that you saw that's a steady increase will have a massive drop we will remove a lot of lines of code, of unused code. So if you know that you care about a subsystem that is basically unmaintained, that hasn't been converted, that just happens to work, I would ex I recommend to sit down soon and talk to your employer or just talk to your wife, whoever actually <laughs> steals your work time. <coughs> you will want to maintain those parts. 
Uh, you saw the talk about USB, so we will have yet another architecture next year, probably. I guess the trend will continue. People just invent new ones. Um, and uh, one really cool thing that's going to ha hit next year is we will basically become the next Hyper-V. So you will be able to run to spawn Hyper-V devices in QMU and then look like Hyper-V. If you like KVM foam so far, or if you did not like it, but I would certainly prefer if you're in the first category, scan that code. That's a URL. Take your phone out, do it right now, scan it. Go to that web page and answer the poll. So we have a poll asking you whether you liked it, why you liked it, who you, uh, why you're here even in the first place, and where you want to be next year. Um, based on that data, uh, we will decide what we should do with KVM from next year. So this is basically your chance to improve the situation next year or not. All right, so with that, happy hacking. Enjoy your time.